Want to see me put some turf on this John boat? Oh, yes, a master. Tough it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, some turf. Here we go. Boop. You're welcome. Send it. Right out of the gate, let's get to the most common question that I get about this turf, which is should you spend the money and get an expensive brand like HydroTurf or one of the other ones, or can you get by with the cheapo Amazon and eBay turfs? Well, I have both cheap Amazon turf and expensive Hydro Deck, which is what we're going to be using in today's video. I have used both of these on previous boat builds, and I can tell you 100% without a shadow of a doubt, I do not recommend any turf. That is cheap from eBay or Amazon. I'm not gonna stand here and tell you why. Let's go up close and I'll show you why. So this one right over here is a cheap like $60 roll of turf that I got from Amazon. And surprisingly, it had really good reviews when I read it. And that's why I bought this stuff because I thought it was gonna be halfway decent. And we'll get to my experience with it here in just a second. But this over here is a product called Hydro Deck. They are made here locally in Ackworth, Georgia. And the first thing that you'll notice is this has not been sitting on a roll for very long this this hydro turf has actually been laying on my desk for a couple of months now and it is still all rolled up like you cannot get this stuff to lay flat it doesn't matter how long you sit it out in the sun it got some kind of memory to it from being on the roll for so long hydro deck not the case at all this stuff really just came off the roll a few minutes ago and you can even get it in sheets if you want to so it's not rolled up but it doesn't have that same memory problem the other big difference that i noticed is you look at the cheap amazon turf and it's not routed on the edges it's just kind of squared off and you look at the nicer hydro deck the edges are actually you know kind of beveled off so it creates a nice little look which i like a lot better so we'll look at the differences in the thickness in the two of these materials you've got the cheap amazon turf over here 5.4 ish millimeters zero this back out and look at the hydro deck uh, 6.5 is a full millimeter maybe even a little bit more thickness than this cheap stuff over here now that may not mean a lot to you but this is thicker and more squishy and more squishy is mo better for your feet especially if you're gonna be standing on this stuff all day i'd rather spend the money and have comfortable turf than this stuff which is not squishy at all it actually feels like standing on a board but here's where the real test is and the issue that i had with the amazon turf is the crap that comes on the back of it is not all that great this is brand new and you can see it's got all these lines and stuff where it has crinkled that sticky glue that's on the back of this just double-sided adhesive whatever this is but we'll take a piece of this stick it down here and we'll take a piece of hydro deck and do the exact same thing and you can see this one, nice and flat, super smooth like it's supposed to be. And we'll put them side by side, give them both a good press down, and watch this. I can take this and rip it right off, no problem. This, Yeah, um, huge difference in the adhesive used between the, I even just, I just unstuck this and it's even hard to get back up, but you will actually, in most cases, rip this stuff if you apply it correctly and try to get it back up versus this, which is just absolute garbage. The adhesive on this stuff absolutely sucks. I'll even cut a fresh piece of this off and repeat it just so you know that I am not fan of this stuff at all look even the backing on this crap doesn't want to come off right give this one even more of a push down and watch this comes right off so I tried a bunch of different methods to get this Amazon turf to stick and I just, everything I tried did not work. The, the adhesive on the back just absolutely sucks. It's not comfortable. It doesn't feel very good quality. And had I known that this stuff sucked and the reviews that were on Amazon were absolutely bogus, I would not have wasted my money. Cause I bought four rolls of this stuff at 60 something dollars a roll when I could have invested in good turf from the get go. Now the problem with good turf is it is not cheap. It doesn't matter what brand that you look at 
at, whether it be hydro deck like we're looking at, hydro turf, C deck, all of them are very expensive. They are usually double, if not more, than what a cheap Amazon or eBay turf is going to cost. But with cost comes longevity because with the cheap Amazon and eBay turfs, they're not going to last. The biggest problem that I had with it is I would stick it on even in the middle of the summer when it's nice and hot outside with the material prepped exactly the way the manufacturer recommended and it still would not stay stuck. Usually after one or two days of being out in the heat, it was already starting to peel up on the edges. It was getting air bubbles underneath it and it's just all around a giant waste of money. So for the 200 and some odd dollars on the four rolls that I wasted and all the time that I wasted on the Amazon turf, I could have easily just bought this stuff and have been a one and done deal. Now this video is not sponsored by Hydro Deck. They did not provide me this stuff for free. I actually paid my own hard earned cash for this material and it was not cheap it was over $200 a sheet. But in my opinion, it was well worth it because this stuff has held up great. So the first thing we need to do before we install the stuff on the boat is we need to go get some of this turf. And luckily for me, they are right around the corner here in Ackworth, Georgia. And I was able to go to their manufacturing facility and actually meet the guys that make this stuff and see what it is that they do. Now, while I wasn't able to film any of the actual manufacturing and the, the back end of what was going on here, I did get to look at a lot of samples and colors and different options that they had out on the table. They do their own custom routing in-house if that is something that you're interested in. Everybody there was super friendly and super nice and it was really cool that they were here in my own backyard and I was able to go pick this stuff up locally. I am a huge believer in doing business local when you can. I understand that not everybody has a place like this near them, but if you are interested in giving Hydro Deck a try, I definitely recommend that you give them a call or check their website out. I've got a link to it down in the description box below. Prep work for the turf install is fairly simple. Doesn't matter if you're doing this over raw aluminum, fiberglass, wood, pick your poison, whatever you made your John boat decking out of, it will work just fine and the prep's gonna be the same. Make sure that you start off with a good wax and grease remover. I'm using Prepsol. You could use alcohol, acetone, whatever it is that can get your surface really good and clean. Now for my boat, there's gonna be some edges around my hatches and around the edge of the deck that's gonna be visible and I don't want it to be raw aluminum. So I'm gonna go through and scuff everything up really good, give it a really good sanding with 80 grit sandpaper, clean it one more time and I'm gonna paint everything black. I'm not using any kind of fancy paint, just some regular old whatever they had at Ace Hardware. And I'm gonna shoot everything with a couple of quick coats of black just on those edges. So whatever the turf doesn't cover will not look like raw aluminum. Once I was done painting, I went over everything with the wax and grease remover one more time just to make sure it was all nice and clean since I was climbing around inside the boat and I gave everything that I'm going to be sticking turf to a really good sanding with an 80 grit sandpaper pad on just a regular random orbital sander. Now the sanding is not required, but it is helpful in making sure that, especially if you're using raw aluminum as you're flooring and you're decking for your boat, it gives that stuff on the back of the turf something to grip to besides just slick aluminum. I spent a lot of money on this turf. I want it to last, so I'm gonna spend that extra few minutes and sand everything so that it can stick really well. When it's finally time to install the turf, it is super simple. Just pretend you're in a giant Lisa Frank sticker book. Start sticking the stuff everywhere. Now, a word of caution, and this is where I made the biggest mistake of this entire install, and that was assuming that the sides of my boat were straight and that when I put this first piece of turf down, that it was going to lay straight. And after I got it installed and it's stuck down and you can't remove it without destroying it, I realized that the side of my boat that I referenced for my first piece was not straight. So all of my flooring on the actual large part of my boat is all at just a slight bit of a wonky angle. The best thing you can do is measure off the sides of your boat, find the absolute dead center of your boat, mark a line, and then use the lines in the turf to line up with the line that you marked. Do not try to use the sides of your boat or anything that wasn't measured in your boat as a reference point because you will end up like me and have a boat that looks like it was turfed by a couple of drunk Oompa Loompas. Another tip that I'll give you I figured out really quickly it is very hard to get these big large pieces stuck down by yourself so the easiest way to do it is actually to score the back of that backing material that covers the pressure sensitive adhesive and only take off small sections at a time. If you try to stick down a big large piece all at once you're going to wind up it either 
you're not going to be straight or you're going to have an air bubble or something is going to happen and it's just much easier to cut a small section off of that backing put it down get it all lined up and then slowly start working your way out towards the other edge another thing i learned about this adhesive is like i said it's pressure sensitive so if you just barely stick it down and don't really put any pressure on it you can remove it and you know kind of move it around a little bit but as soon as you start stepping on it or putting any kind of pressure on it or pushing it down a stuff is stuck and if you try to remove it you're more than likely going to damage your very expensive turf so make sure you got it down where you want it before you start actually pushing on it now for getting the final pressure you know kind of seating this stuff down you probably use like some kind of carpet or vinyl roller if you have one but in my redneck brilliance i don't own one of those so i used a rolling pin which works equally just as fine but right tool for the right job if you can get a roller get a roller if not use a rolling pin like i did but again make 100 percent sure that you've got your turf where you want it stuck down lightly before you put any pressure on it at all because once this stuff is down it is like pierce bronson it is bonded james bonded and it ain't coming back up easily. And the floor on my boat is just big and wide open. There's nothing installed in it right now, so that was the easiest part of the install. The upright part of the back of the deck is a little bit tricky to get everything lined up. I was able to do it in small pieces, and I highly recommend if you can work in smaller pieces, it makes things a lot easier. Cut them a little bit oversized, and then just trim off what you don't need. Now, the front deck of my boat was a whole nother story. It wasn't that it was particularly difficult, it was just that I had no idea how quickly this stuff chews through razor blades. Knowing what I know now, I would have went and bought about 50 brand spanking new razor blades and about every, I'd say, 10 inches of cut I made, I would swap the razor blade to a brand new fresh one. When you go to install this turf, you're going to install it right over all of your hatches and your deck lids and all that stuff, and then you're going to use the razor blade to actually cut around all of the edges of your hatches and any reveals that you need. And I've very quickly learned that if you do not have a brand spanking new sharp razor blade you are going to have a hell of a time trying to cut this stuff and make the lines nice and straight and as soon as you see that the turf is not cutting really nice and smooth anymore instead of doing what I did and continuing wondering why in the hell it is not cutting stop what you're doing and replace your razor blade and because I'm a moron and didn't stop and replace my razor blade I end up with a lot of jagged cuts on the edges of my hatches which I'm gonna have to show you how to fix later. The other area that I made a huge mistake was cutting the turf around the edges of the boat. My boat is all sorts of wonky on the side. None of it is smooth or straight. My boat's been hit a lot so it was really hard to try to follow the edge of the boat and get a nice straight cut and it was even harder because I wasn't using a brand new razor blade. Now luckily I'm a high-tech redneck so I'm going to show you here in a few minutes how you can fix it if you made some really bad cuts like I did. Your life will be a lot easier if you just replace your razor blade about every 10 to 12 inches of cut that you make and again once you get everything all installed go back over it with a roller or rolling pin whatever you want make sure you've got it all pushed down especially around the edges now to fix all those jagged cut lines along the side of my hatches and my lids and stuff i went back with some 120 grit sandpaper and i just lightly sanded the edge of this turf back and it actually sanded really well and it allowed me to give the edges a little bit of a bevel to match the bevel that's already routed into the turf so so even though i screwed up my my cut lines it still wind up looking really really good with the sanded edges just go slow and be careful the sandpaper does eat through this stuff really really fast so so just take your time and make sure you're not removing too much material too fast now what you just saw was all prior to the installation of the catwalks in my boat if you want to see how i built the interior of this boat i've got a video that i'll link to up here and you can check it out but after the catwalks were installed they needed to be turfed as well and it was the same lisa frank sticker book process clean everything really well give it a sanding with 80 grit sandpaper and then give it one more good cleaning stick the stuff down and you are good to go i bought a total of six sheets of hydro deck for my boat and i did you wind up using all six of them now i did have some pretty large pieces left over so that i could do like a cooler lid or maybe even do a small repair job if i needed to later on down the road so i do have some left over but six sheets is what it took me to do my 1648 completely decked out with the two catwalks now my front 
deck on my boat measures a little over seven foot long and then the remainder of the flooring part of my boat was about nine foot long so that gives you kind of a rough idea of how much turf you will need if you have a similar size boat to mine now if your kindergarten teacher gave you an f in coloring because you didn't know how to stay in the lines your cut lines on the side of your boat probably look like mine so all of my cuts are nice and swervy like a 17 year old driving home after a long night of zima so i came up with a really clever idea of how we can fix this let's take a look at that so what we have here is some vinyl baseboard molding this stuff's got like a little cove built into it here on the edge and then the rest of it's all just this little flimsy vinyl you can pick up this stuff at lowe's or home depot it's like i think two bucks a piece and they're four foot long so what we're going to do with this is we're going to make some trim strips that will actually cover up that ugly nasty cut line that i have and give the you know edge of the boat a nice little trimmed out look so we'll start with cutting this stuff i've got a piece of half inch by a half inch like c channel aluminum here you can use whatever you want as your spacer so we're going to take the aluminum we're going to stick it up to that little coved edge right there and we're gonna stick it on the edge of my workbench here. And then I'm just gonna use some clamps to hold it in place. Now that I've got that secured down real well, I'm gonna take just a brand spanking new razor blade and I'm going to make a cut all the way down. Stuff actually cuts fairly easily. Yep, get rid of that. And now we've got our little trim strip. Now all we need to do is wash, rinse, and repeat a bunch more times, and then we'll get it installed. All right, so we got our strips cut. This flat part is just gonna sit up against the side of the boat like that. And we're gonna be using this Gorilla Max Strength Construction Adhesive, this clear stuff. And we're gonna put a little bead on the back side of this, and hopefully that will hold it in place. And then for this last part, I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. A Senate video would not be complete without a little time in the haters corner. I've got my hater raid, so here we go. If you're new here and you've never seen the haters corner, what we like to do at the end of every video is stand in a corner and see who was the most butt hurt in the comments over the last couple of weeks. And since we know people are super sensitive on the interwebs, we don't use their real name, we just call them Scooter. And Scooter was very active in the comments section over the last couple of weeks, so I actually had to print these out. So Scooter commented on the 16 foot boat build video and he says any concern over exceeding the boat's maximum weight capacity, boat gear and passengers is not supposed to exceed the rated weight capacity. Rangers in my state check this every safety check. So I responded and said, I go fish where the law can't find me. I don't like the government telling me what I can and can't do with my boat. It's mine. If I want to sink it, I will. But no, it floats just fine. The boat was built in 1979, so there is no weight capacity sticker on it anywhere. And I actually typoed and wrote 1879 instead of 1979, but that's neither here or there. So this scooter decides to write back. He says, well, when you sink it and drown, it's the people who have to recover your dead body and the citizens who have to pay for it. Apparently, you have no family because you don't give a about laws or dying you make all fishermen look bad with statements like you just made by the way and they did not have rolled aluminum sheet goods in 1879 well that's all very interesting but do you know what the difference between a joke and two dicks is scooter can't take a joke Jeez, people i swear y'all take comments way too seriously i have never seen people wanting to fist fight in the comment section over something so stupid if you got a state that really is hard up on you about your boat regulations and how much weight you put in the boat, then do what you want to do. I don't care. It don't matter to me. <laughs> My boat's so old, it don't even have a sticker on it to tell you what the weight capacity is, so I kind of guessed. 
But even if I do get stopped, old Green Jean's not like he's going to weigh my boat on the side of the river somewhere and go, oh, you got 19 pounds, too much aluminum in there, buddy. Whatever. Our next scooter commented on the same video. He wrote, still convinced that your beard is glued on. Well, Scooter, your mom's been yanking on the old beard pretty hard the last couple of weeks and uh, hadn't come loose yet, so 5200 for the win. Another Scooter commented on the same video and he wrote, Hot glue, you just lost your man card. You've been demoted to a pronoun. Duct tape for everything, including your mouth. Owning a hot glue gun does not make me a pronoun, but I can tell you that 90% of all communication is nonverbal. So you should definitely pay really close attention to Scooter's body language when he's trying to communicate with you. For instance, if Scooter goes unconscious, it's probably because you're choking him a little too hard. Our next Scooter also commented on the same video. We had a lot of Scooters on this video. I kind of knew that was going to happen. But Scooter writes, Skill saw for cutting sheet aluminum. <laughs> I rip it with my hands. You must have the strength of a little girl. Scooter, did you know that towels are the leading cause of dry skin? Idiot. Absolute idiot. Our next Scooter commented over on the same video, and he wrote, Great video, thanks. Sunglass smiley face emoji. Wait. Typical, my buddy welded it because all I have is a hand riveter. Shouldn't have wasted your money on that bidet and beard dye. First off, if you want to get up close and look at all of the wonderful gray and this glorious beard from all the retarded comments that I have to read on a regular basis from Scooter, you will see that I have never used beard dye in my entire life. And I've also never owned a bidet, but since Scooter is so into squirting water and other things up his butt, I really hope that he's more careful with his pogo stick. I would hate for his front butt to get sodomized with a metal rod. That would be terrible. But you should definitely know that if Scooter cleans out his vacuum cleaner, Scooter is now a vacuum cleaner. Just saying. So our honorable mention for the week, Scooter writes, Never caught on fire yet, but have had all of the following. Hull hulls, paint gouges, lost anchors, busted trolling motor shafts, chewed up props, screaming smoky tires on a boat ramp, Rubbermaid totes splitting open because they stuffed too full of carp with arrow holes in them. Tangled string leading to a lost arrow two times. Fall in the water, she was driving. Snake fall in the boat. Snake chopped up into pieces in the boat. Slashes in the boat floor caused by killing snake. Again, no fires, but I certainly do send it. Whew, that's a whole nother level of sending it, Scooter. This one's for you, buddy. Now we're going to go full send on those bloopers here in just a second, but first let us take a moment and always remember, money can't buy you happiness, but it can buy you a boat. And some really cool hydro deck or that cheap shit from Amazon if you want to waste your money. Bye guys. Want to see me put some turf on this boat? After this car drives by, I'm trying to... That cool, so you know, I don't look like some retard in his driveway talking to himself or people are driving by. That would be weird. Bay turf, or should you spend the money and get one of the better, more, the, uh, the... Mm! Ah, super, it's raining. Uh, not good. Not, not good at all. Uh-oh. Right out the gate, let's get to the, um, uh, let's get to the, um, let's get to... Oh, yes, I must die. How much for starting to rain at 6? It's, it's 3.30. Oh, damn it!